At the American Academy of Ophthalmology's annual meeting in Atlanta, we had a chance to speak with Dr. Carol Shields, Associate Director of the Ocular Oncology Service at Will's Eye Institute. Dr. Shields, widely recognized as a preeminent authority on ocular tumors, is Professor of Ophthalmology at Thomas Jefferson University. Well, there, there are many causes of white pupil. I think I'll divide them into normal and abnormal eye problems. So a, a, a patient who comes in with a white pupil, perhaps if it's a child who comes in with a white pupil, can come in with an absolutely normal eye. And if the photograph is taken of the eye with the eye about 15 degrees off the axis of the visual axis, so off to the side, you might get a white pupil because you're imaging the optic nerve. And so that would be a normal eye exam. And I know that from personal experience because that happened with one of our ch children. But there are problems that can cause white pupil, beginning with the front of the eye, the cornea. Some congenital corneal scars or opacities can lead to a white pupil. A cataract can lead to a white pupil. And if we move further back in the eye, any abnormality in the vitreous, whether it be blood or infection or inflammation can cause a white pupil. And then retinal problems can lead to white pupil. We call white pupil leukocoria. Some of the retinal problems that lead to leukocoria include retinal detachment and then the one that we all fear, retinoblastoma. So retinoblastoma is the most serious cause of leukocoria in children. So if you have a child with a white pupil, I would see the local ophthalmologist or the local pediatric ophthalmologist. I would tell them on the phone that your child has a white pupil, and I think it's relatively urgent to see them within a week. So your ophthalmologist will first start out by taking a vision on the child and dilating the eyes, and it's very critical that they dilate the eyes to look into the back of the eye. So we have instruments that we look at the front of the eye. It's called the slit lamp biomicroscope. And they'll be looking for cataract and inflammation in the front of the eye. But most importantly, they should dilate the eye to look at the retina to see if there's a retinal detachment or if there's a retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is a cancer of the eye. Many cancers in the body require a biopsy to make the diagnosis, not retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma requires a good eye examination with the ophthalmologist recognizing the clinical features of this tumor. So the diagnosis of retinoblastoma is established by clinical examination. That is, a dilated examination with the ophthalmologist putting the equipment on their head, using their lenses, and looking into the back of the eye. Most people will also confirm the diagnosis by taking a photograph of the eye and also doing an ultrasound. Why an ultrasound? An ultrasound is a test where you place a probe on the eye and using sound waves, you can identify if there's calcium in the mass that you see in the eye. Retinoblastoma is one of the few cancers in the eye that produces calcium. So when you do an ultrasound, you establish the size of the tumor, its location, how extensive it is, and one important point, if there's calcium or not. If there's calcium, then you pretty much have your diagnosis. Our goals when we manage retinoblastoma are threefold. Number one, we have to make decisions to save the child's life. Retinoblastoma is 100% fatal if a child has an active tumor and it's not treated. So our first goal is to save the life of the child. Our second goal is to save at least one eye for that child. And our third goal is to maximize their vision. So we have to balance all three of these goals when we make a decision on how to treat retinoblastoma. Basically, we have options of eye removal, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and if the tumor is really small, laser treatment or cryotherapy, which is a freezing treatment. So the management of retinoblastoma depends on the extensiveness of the tumor within the eye. Fortunately, in the United States, the systemic prognosis for retinoblastoma is excellent. 95 to 99 percent of children in the United States survive retinoblastoma. It's not so elsewhere in the world. 
in undeveloped countries, they're still struggling with survival of the patient because of late diagnosis. And about 50% of children in countries that are undeveloped uh, survive this cancer. Another subject or issue to discuss is what is the ocular survival? Like, if you do start chemotherapy, what is the chance that that eye will survive or remain or not need to be removed? And a lot of this depends on the stage of the eye at the time of detection. If you have a group A eye, that eye is going to be saved. If you have a group B or C eye, there's a 90 to 95 percent chance that eye will be saved. If you have a group D eye, there's about a 50-50 chance that that eye will be saved with chemotherapy. And a group EI, the chance is very low. It's about a 20 to 30 percent chance that eye will be saved with chemotherapy. But there are a lot of new ideas coming out with regards to management of retinoblastoma. So if, if I had an, a child with a white pupil, the first thing I would do is I would call my ophthalmologist and ask if I could have an appointment within a week or two weeks because of the potential seriousness of the problem. I would hope that it was just the optic disc or a normal eye giving a funny reflex. I would worry that it might be retinoblastoma. And if it were retinoblastoma, the first thing I would do is I'd ask my ophthalmologist what major center is close to me where I can have my child examined by experienced ocular oncologist and treated. Unequivocally, I would go to a center for retinoblastoma. I would not have treatment locally at home. And then I would go to that center and I would listen to the physician regarding the classification of the tumor in one eye or both eyes. Feeling good if the class was group A, B, or C. Worrying a little bit if it was group D or E. And knowing all along that my main goal is to save my child's life and hopefully save one eye and hope down the road that maybe the vision could be protected.